Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts. And today we got a guest. He took my class. He's still here. And his name is Ken, and he's from California. He's almost 78 years old. He drive, drove all the way out across the country. It takes him six days or so. And he's up by uh, where Yosemite National Park is. He's a lifelong car guy. And he had this dream like 30 years ago of building this car. So, Ken, you, you made this drawing, right? Yes. Explain the process, how this drawing came about. I like, I like French cars. Uh, Art Deco, so I made this drawing, and a lot of the work was done with a compass, n no French curve. And uh, so, so there's true radiuses, and mostly well, all throughout the whole uh, drawing. And he did a really nice drawing. His trade was uh, being a sign painter, and uh, it's, it's indicative that, uh, or apparent rather, that uh, he knows a good line, and he, he did a beautiful job on this. Uh, illustration here. Now he took this and he brought it to a friend who does these uh, concept drawings and made it into a, uh, a 3D isometric type uh, drawing and that's what the car is going to look like. All the fenders are the same. So 30 years ago he was hot to trot on this thing and he built this bus out of MDF. The, uh, Everybody sees these wood boxes and thinks this is the way to go. He made it out of MDF. It was sitting in the back woodshed and the roof leaked or something and it got a little water on it so it got a little distorted and he brought this out and he's just got a regular, uh, I think a two door or four door passenger car so he didn't have a pickup. So he cut it in a couple sections. Four sections. Four sections so we had to make these little joiner uh, blocks and screw nail it back together again. But his intent was to, he had tried to make a fender on this before, back in his own home shop, and he wasn't really happy with it. So that's one of the reasons why he took my class. He was intrigued by the wire form. So we made this wire form. Ken made the wire form all by himself. And the way he did that, is he took cardboard, put the cardboard on these stations, traced it, and then put the cardboard on the bench and bent the wire to the cardboard. So as you can see, if Mark can come over here with the camera, he did a really good job. It's quarter inch hot roll wire, very inexpensive. It comes in uh, 20 or 24 foot lengths. And now it's up to about uh, $3 to $3.50 for a 20-foot length. So it's very inexpensive, less money than you would ever spend on uh, the MDF uh, content on that uh, wood buck. And it's all MIG welded together. He took all the measurements and all the curves all off of that. And if he didn't have that, he would have made this the same way with the compasses and making these curves the same way he did those. Now on this wood buck, he did add all of the openings, which a lot of people don't do, which will allows you to see in how the panel is fitting. Now as you see, he had to put draft, and this is a, a, a little uh, nebulous on how to do this, is how to how much draft, you got too much draft, not enough draft on it. That's not an issue because on the wire form because it picks up right at the high point of the round. You don't have to worry about draft. And in this case, you had to have draft on this station, this station, this station. This station looks like it's pretty much a 90 degree, but this one has draft. The center line, uh, you put a peak on the center line right here, and there's no draft the rest of it. This has a life expectancy. Humidity affects it quite a bit and can distort it. It's very, very heavy. It's very easily broken if you drop it off a bench. I much prefer the wire form. I, I try to push that to all my students that wire form is a much better system. Why? You can see this panel here. You can see how it's, you can clamp up. You have total visibility. And we use a, a 10,000 feeler gauge like this as you're developing the panel you you put the feeler gauge in here and if there's tight spots then that's where you have to develop the panel now we were going to weld these two together last night 
and we got a preliminary fit up on them but I found that it actually needed a little more area, a little more shaping right up on the top here. So uh, we'll probably do that before we uh, finally weld this up. Now, if we take this one off and we put this on the wood station buck, which generated all the lines, you see we, on this one, we ended up putting this other station here, which gave us this extra information. This extra information is super critical to make a good panel because it's just too uh, nebulous here. You don't have anything. So technically he would need another station in here to, to, to know for sure that he, he actually made the panel perfectly and it's got a nice flow to it. So you can see this fits really nice now, but in the process of trying to fit this up, the difference between the, the wood station buck and the wire form is this one, because he cut these open, you can actually see it pretty good, but he had a clamp, you would have to clamp, and it would be very difficult to get clamps on here. We use these nice little squeeze clamps. Still 99 cents at Home Depot, these little squeeze clamps, you add the rubber to it and that allows you to clamp this so easily. You have to clamp panels to get a really good fit. So the rubber you can find at Tractor Supply. It's very inexpensive at Tractor, the cheapest rubber around. It's uh, a horse mat. They're about uh, three feet long and two feet wide and I think they're under $30 still. So it's very inexpensive to make these clamps. Very inexpensive to make this buck. As a contrast to the process of making a MDF uh, station buck or a wire form buck, we have a situation like this where we have a MGA fender. Uh, and this is being done by Ian from Kirchner, uh, Ontario. He came down from my class. And uh, he want, this is the MGA fender and he wants to make this piece from the 12 o'clock position in the wheel opening all the way to here. And you can see there's a lot of, lot of uh, transition here. So uh, it can be made in one piece, but we're making it in two pieces. We split it up in two pieces. And Ian's currently working on this piece. He's got this piece mostly done. It needs a little bit of planishing uh, right here. That's the front piece. It has to have the joggles all put on it. But I asked Ian, I said, Okay, if you were going to make this panel and you went online and you see all these uh, wood station box and you decided that the only way you're going to be able to make this is with a wood station buck, how long would this take to make a wood station buck? And you would have to make the left side of this and you would have to make the right side of this. So I, I would guesstimate that uh, you would have to have some pretty good woodworking skills and it would take you at least a week to make a wood station buck for a left and right of this fender section. And in, in, in contrast with that wood station buck, uh, I had him make a flexible shape pattern. And uh, technically, if he was proficient in making flexible shape pads, he should be able to do this all within, I don't know, maybe five hours or something like that. So it's a great time saver, and it has all the information of the surface. And that's on a pot that you can copy. But like Ken's part over here, you're going to walk with me. Ken's part, this is an original design. And Ken wanted to do this because this is, he's going to do this times four on his car. All the fenders are the same. And he figures if he can do the fenders, he can do the body. So uh, this was just an exercise at the class, and he's not, he doesn't have room to take it home in his car, so he's going to leave it here. And I thought it was a really good project for the students. So it's another one of the cool projects we got, and different students make different panels. This one was made by uh, Dennis, I believe he lives in uh, uh, Virginia, and he made these two tail sections. Another guy, Chris, made this panel. And I think one of the panels didn't get started yet, but we've got all the other panels going. Uh, Ken made uh, this one, it needs a little work. And he made this one, and these both need a little bit of tuning. And that'll be for a student in another class. We'll get this tuned up, and eventually I'll put it up on my uh, loft above my office, and it'll be a nice little display piece. So that's another project that we did in the class. 
I just wanted to uh, contrast the different methods. Uh, the wood station buck, which seems to be dominant in everybody's uh, uh, mind as far as how to develop an original design. The wood station buck is more uh, prevalent everywhere, whereas the wire form, I believe, is catching on. There's a lot more people using the wire form technique, and it's a great technique. That has a life expectancy. You drop it, like I said, it'll break. It'll, it'll get uh, humidity affected. It turns to junk after a while. It's very heavy. This is a much lighter. We got these nice little stand we made for this so we can put the clamps right on the bottom holding the panel. And they go, the people might say, well, why do you need the clamps? You need the clamps because you feed back off of the buck as you're making the panel. So the panel is underdeveloped generally in the center of the panel. You put the clamps on, it hits because it's underdeveloped, it's going to hit the stations, and it tells you exactly where you have to work in order to make it fit. So when you first put it on, these edges might be two inches away from where they need to be. As you work the panel, it settles in, and it fits really good. And so when it hits all the wires 100%, and there's no tension in the panel, it just goes whoop. There might be a little bit, you know, like that, which is not going to be an issue at all. Even that can be adjusted, and you can get them absolutely perfect, dead, dead on. And this is going to make a, a really nice fender. Like I said, it's just going to be a display piece. All right. So these paper patents are the technique we use to get the initial information as to how to shape these panels. We put the paper on here, and the nice thing, again, it's metal. You can put magnets on holding the, the paper on, and then you cut slices with a razor and tape it all up both sides, and that will give you what I call a proto-flexible shape pattern. That gives you the game plan to get your panel started. So as you can see, it's got to rise up right here. That's for that back tail, and here is the front section, and it's not a perfect... Uh, flexible shape pattern, and if this is for the other side, it's this right. It's not perfect, but it gets you started. This one here, you can see there's a little extra material in here, so you don't want to fill it out totally, but you can get started on it, and when you get, after you get it started, then you can put it on here and clamp it, and it's going to be tight on this wire, because that's where it needs to be popped up the most, and then you'll get a really nice fit as, as you continue to work the panels. So I hope that helped you understand the differences between the buck and the flexible shape pattern. And thanks, Ken, for coming out to the class. And uh, this is a great example between the MDF buck or the wood station buck and the wire form and also the flexible shape pattern. So thanks for watching. It's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop. Please subscribe. Give us the comments. Hit the notification bell. That notification bell is really important because if you hit that, every time uh, a new video is put up, and we've had like a four week uh, hiatus on our videos, as soon as you, a new video is put up, that notification bell will ring in, on your phone or your computer, and you'll know that we have a new video that, that's gone up. So thanks for watching. Remember, metal is clay.